Hey everyone, and welcome to the first official Seed of Andromeda physics uh, demonstration video. This week I didn't have enough features to uh, put in an update video. I'm in the middle of doing some major system changes. Uh, you'll notice in this uh, video there's no real biome system going on. It's pretty much just the same thing repeated over and over again. I'm actually sh I've actually stripped out all of the biomes so that I can switch over to a new system. Uh, what I'm going to do with these physics update videos is usually I'll do them whenever I don't have enough features for a good update video and I'll just kind of talk about what I'm working on as cool physics happens in the background. So right now what I'm working on is changing the tree system. Uh, before it was kind of a hard-coded system. There were a few variables you could change in text files to uh, alter the trees but there wasn't a whole lot of control you had. You couldn't really change the slope of the trunk or anything like that. So what I'm doing is pretty much changing over the entire tree system. I've removed all the old trees, and this new system has uh, text files that represent each tree, and each text file has uh, upwards of 40 variables in it, and there will probably be more that you can alter to change the pattern of the tree. And I've also had requests uh, in, for in the future to include maybe some Lua scripting so you can actually create your own tree algorithms rather than just changing the parameters, but right now, uh, there's so much functionality and there's so much planned functionality for the trees that you should be able to make some pre pretty much any tree you can imagine just by changing the values. You can even make a tree made out of you know different blocks. It doesn't necessarily have to be wood. But uh, in a future update, uh, right now Sebastian, uh, Sebastian Corfitz and one of my designers is doing the main work on the trees right now and we're going to have some other people help out. So we should have a huge library of trees uh, to choose from as we construct the biomes. Now what I want for the biome system is I want to have a, uh, and this was suggested by Sebastian, is to have a basically three-tier biome system. Rather than just having biomes like, you know, tundra, forests that are just kind of arbitrary based on uh, temperature and rainfall, instead what I want to do is have first a base biome, which could be tundra, you know, it, it could be uh, arid, badlands, things like that, and this base biome will be terrain or will be biomes that can appear at any elevation and in any terrain feature because as it stands the terrain features are just kinda you know randomly spread out they can overlap the world can be just anything you can imagine there's there's really any combination of terrain features that can happen at once and so what the biomes do the base biomes is they just kinda add flavor to the the main part of the world and then what can override those base biomes is called a special biome and the special biomes will be things like sandy deserts that, that can't occur on top of a mountain or especially swamps. Swamps you can't have on a mountain, you can't have a swamp at the bottom of the ocean. And that what the special biomes will do is they will override the terrain features there by multiplying the current height by a uh, decimal number to lower it down and then it will apply its own terrain functions on top of it. So a, a swamp will have, you know, swamp lands and it'll have maybe, you know, little bog type things in it. And then of course they'll have their own trees and flora, which will be heavily in design later. Um, <clears throat> and th what I think this feature is going to do is it's just going to give the world a lot more flavor. It's going to give the world lots of different biomes that you can explore. There's going to be lots of different combinations of things. And it should be really easy to mod, because all of this is going to be done through just text files. Uh, I chose to go with the text file approach because everybody knows how to use a text file. So even, you know, a computer newbie can basically just open up the text file and change things and see the world evolve. Um, anyways, the third tier is going to be the sub-biome, and that's actually a biome inside the special biome. So we may have swamps, but then sub-biomes of swamps will be mushroom forests or uh, bogs or things like that. And these are smaller biomes inside the swamp biome, because the biomes are going to be huge. They're going to be realistic. And in order to make them interesting, we need to make it so that there are lots of sub-biomes. There needs to be more than just, you know, the same repeated features over and over again. And that's just, that's going to make the world a lot more enjoyable, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> something else I wanted to talk about is some of the requests people have been making. A lot of people are requesting um, mass physics, like on a really large scale. Like, as you're seeing in, in this video, there's some really cool physics going on. It's really fast. It's highly optimized. It's not going to run on all computers this fast. I'm actually running this on a GTX 680 with an i7-3770K, which is a pretty high-end computer, I think. But you can still run these simulations on uh, slower computers. They'll just probably have lower frame rates. So the requests I've been getting have been for things such as tsunamis, uh, you know, massive floods, 
things like rain gathering on mountains, forming flowing rivers, things like these right now currently I, I can't really think of how they're going to be possible because this water simulation works really well but it works really well for the voxel area. It works really well for a closed uh, world which is you know just these chunks. All of the rest of the world is not voxels currently. It's just the height map representing where the voxels are. We can't actually simulate water physics there because there's nothing loaded into memory there. At the current state, the normal voxel world takes about 1.3 gigabytes of RAM. If we expand that, it just gets bigger and bigger and it gets harder and harder to handle. And we, With that many block updates, things like simulating a flowing river it gets really tough, uh, flowing rivers especially. When, when you think about it, if you go to a river that is flowing, or a waterfall or something, how do you determine when the water flows out of the chunks? What do you do with it? Do you make that water just disappear whenever it flows to the height map mesh, or do you load it into the next chunk and just wait for the player to update that chunk? I mean, I could see this breaking player waterfalls if we, uh, or player made fountains, I could see it breaking them. Um, there's just there's just so many issues that could be associated with it that I don't really want to focus on making that kind of realistic scale in the game right now. It'd just be a lot of work for something that probably isn't going to end up being functional at all. So I'm just going to keep the water simulation at a local scale. Probably won't have flowing rivers. I might be able to get natural waterfalls going with some kind of source sink system because not all, we can't just have infinite source blocks that make waterfalls because then they're going to end up creating huge pools of water that fill up a whole chunk world. We, we don't want to do that. There could be a way to have water that falls and then has a timer and then eventually it evaporates quicker than other water or something like that. There, there's probably a way to do this. There's probably not a way to do it perfectly. There's probably going to be issues and exploits and ways for people to kind of mess with the physics, but that's kind of to be expected and it's it's pretty much just a, you know, it's it's okay if people mess around with the physics like that. I mean, people did it with Minecraft. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be fine. If we have... Right now, I'm actually working on water pressure. I get the feeling it's not going to be perfect. There's probably going to be ways to exploit it. Um, I haven't quite thought it all through yet, but if you guys can figure out how to make, I don't know, infinite pumps or something like that, cool. I'll, if I can fix it, I will. If not, then that's what happens. Right now, water pressure is looking pretty tough. The games like Dwarf Fortress use um, a, I think they use a pathfinding approach where they just pathfind where the water should go. I can't really do that with this scale of a simulation, I don't think. I haven't tried. I, I really don't think it's going to work. So instead I'm trying to do pressure on a per voxel basis where they receive pressure from their neighbors. Um, and I have to do this without using any more memory. I need to conserve the 32 per bit, or 32 bit per voxel limit right now. So what I'm trying to do is... Um, expand. Right now we have 100 water levels, uh, 100 block IDs reserved to water levels. I'm trying to utilize a system where we reserve a whole another 100 uh, block IDs for additional pressure levels. And I've had some progress right now, but there's just too many cases where things can go wrong. Um, there are some rules I want to add and tweak. It's probably going to slow down the water a titch, but it shouldn't slow it down too much. Um, and as for the tsunamis uh, that people have been asking for, I like the rivers. I I don't think they're gonna they're gonna be possible. We can probably do some really cool storm effects, but tsunamis are different, and they require you know flooding and things like that, which might be cool, but it also might just make a huge mess and it might just really piss people off. Um, we can have things like tornadoes on far terrain because the tornado would only need to load in a few chunks at a time and modify those chunks. But I feel like if I do add natural disasters like that, I should definitely offer the option to disable them because they could really mess up a world. You know, you could have spent all this time on a castle and then suddenly, oh, here comes a tornado to screw everything up. And that's definitely not something I would like to experience. And I feel like the added functionality of the tornado would be, you know, it would be such a rare occurrence that it would be kind of a waste to have for now. It may be something I just decide to add later. What I do want to focus on is weather soon. I want to get, you know, rainstorms, hailstorms, snowstorms, things like that. Wind is going to be tough. I haven't quite figured out how that's going to work. Um, uh, if you guys have any ideas, uh, any of you guys who do uh, voxel, do your own voxel games, um, feel free to send me uh, videos of your voxel games because I really love um, looking at videos of other people's engines. Uh, my f the first inspiration of this game came from other voxel games. 
Uh, chances are I've probably seen your game if you do put it on YouTube, because I do kind of search around for games and just look around when I'm bored. But feel free to send them to me, and if you have any questions regarding Voxel Engines, I'll do what I can to help you out. Anyways, I've gotten way off tangent. What was I talking about? I was talking about the mass physics. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Right now, I'm just focusing on the systems. Uh, there's a lot of features I want to add. I, I need some bug fixing time, too. Uh, I want to add features so that I can give you guys some cool videos, but I also need to have a long period of bug fixing, because I do have quite a to-do list as far as bugs go, and of course as far as features go. Um, and I do want to do some optimizations like instancing and things like that to help make the game run faster on slower computers. The game is pretty optimized, and I know people hate premature optimization, but um, I don't really consider this premature optimization because it helps it run better on my development laptop. Uh, but let's see, future. I'm looking at the change log right now. Things I'm going to work on in the future after this system is uh, worked out. I'll be able to focus on other things because the designers and some of my friends will be working on shaping the world probably and I'll probably be spending time helping them flesh it out and add features as they request them but uh, I'm going to be adding new plants as well, a new plant system so that you can have taller plants and possibly wider plants, plants that can you know be like a large bush or something like that. Anyways, it uh, looks like this, this, I'm out of time for this video just about, let me see how much time do I have left. I'm just kind of talking alongside it. I've got a few minutes left. Um, and I, actually, I don't have any time. I looked at it wrong. Thanks for joining me, guys. Um, stay tuned for next week's update video. It'll probably be a pretty thick change log. Peace out.